Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It is September 13th, 2023, and we are in the Old Testament, and we are in the book of 2 Samuel. We're going to read chapter 3 today. Uh, a few things are going on here. Saul has died, and, and, and the kingdom split. And I don't know, you might have a map in the back of your... Let's see if I can do this without getting this light on it. Kind of label something like the land of the 12 tribes is what this one's called. And you look down here and you see where Judah is down here at the bottom. So that becomes the southern kingdom. And then everything up here becomes Israel. Down here becomes Judah. And, and we start to see that separation start to take place. It's going to get reunited under David and Solomon. But when we get to Rehoboam, it splits back up along that line again. And, and we start focusing more and more on Judah as distinct from Israel. Which is according to God's prophecies that, that that's what's going to happen. That Judah was going to rise up. That's where the, the salvation of, of Jesus is going to come out of the tribe of Judah. All right. So what else is going on? Well, we said they kind of broke into a civil war. We met Abner, who was Saul's military commander, and when Saul dies, Abner goes to Ishbaeth, which is one of the remaining sons of Saul that's alive, and, and elevates him to king. And we said, well, that wasn't necessarily a sinful act. It wasn't really a rebellion against David because we, we possibility he didn't realize David was supposed to be the king after that because... Solomon only anointed David king privately. There was no second anointing in front of all the people. So you, you kind of had to know what happened to know that David was the intended replacement for Saul. So they separate. Abner goes with, with Ishbosheth. Uh, you have Joab, which was David's military commander, elevates David. And those two become opposed to each other. They have have a have a major battle. Uh, David's troops only lose a, about 19 people, plus Joab's Joe, one of Joab's brother, Abner, and, and the, tri the the armies of Israel lose many thousands. So we see right off the bat that people should start realizing God's with David, not with Israel. This starts off saying many years. So what happened in those intervening years? You, you, you go look at the book of Kings. So Kings kind of comes in there. Uh, then it talks about David's sons. And if you go to Chronicles, that's where we get more of David's sons. So we're starting to see books splitting off and going different directions. Some of it is overlap and some of it is giving us new perspectives depending on what the author was trying to convey to us. Excuse me. It said that uh, I'm not quite sure that Abner w w was sinful in his nature when we first see him, but we, we kind of start to see that maybe he is. One of the first things that happens in, in this section that we're going to read is Ishboeth accuses Abner uh, of sleeping with one of Saul's concubines. Very serious charge. Now, it had nothing to do with the sex. It was essentially, okay, you're, you're trying to move in and, and make yourself a successor to Saul. And we see that Abner gets very upset. Doesn't have, it never actually denies it and never actually says he did it. But that's the intrigue. Is, is he's being accused of, of trying to push Ishboeth out of the way and, and take his place. When we see Abner finally come and meet David, he, he's addressing him like he's the one in charge of all of Israel. And as Israel goes... As he goes, so goes the northern tribes. So he is starting to elevate himself. So not not sure if he started in a sinful place, but he's starting to seize power and, and become a, a more major influence as we get through here. He makes peace with David because of that slight uh, that Ishbeth insulted him. Offers to 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 make peace. Says. I'll, David says, okay, I'll make peace with you, but you got to go get my, my first wife, Mikhail, the one that Saul gave him way back in here. We haven't heard a lot about her. Right before that, though, we get a list of, of his wives and his kids, and he, and he 
Last time we saw he had two wives besides Mikhail, now he's got a bunch of wives. So he's starting to grow into that kingship. Uh, you know, and that's how you would make peace with tribes around you is, you know, I'll marry my son to your daughter or you, you, you know, you, you'll send your son to marry my daughter. So we start to see these bonds of marriage and then they have kids and now we have an even stronger bond. So he's starting to play the king game. No, nothing wrong with that. He is the king, but, but we're starting to see that, well, we, we never see him consult with God again in this section here. So he's starting to... Like I said, do more king things, and, and, and he's starting to think he doesn't really need God here. He'll get called back, don't worry. But right now, we're seeing a bunch of men who are trying to do men things and make men decisions, and they're, and they're not putting God in here, and, and this is a place where they should. We, we see Joab, after Abner leaves, sneaks off, grabs Abner, brings him back, says, hey, I got something to tell you, and he, and he murders him. That, for, the, for for killing his brother. Now, Abner killed his brother during war. Joab just straight up murders Abner. David finds out. David understands it's a sin. And, and we see that David is kind of afraid of Joab because that's the commander of the army. So he does not actually punish the sin. So now we're starting to see, well, you know, it was a sin. I should punish you. I should kill you. But you know what? I'm going to tolerate it because you're useful because I'm afraid of you, because I, I, I think that you might turn on me instead of saying, hey, you know what, God is with me, you committed a sin, and I'm going to punish you. Now, Joab does get punished eventually, but it takes all the way to the end of David's life for that to happen. main thing David's concerned with is, is not punishing Joab, but making sure everyone sees that he it was not his will that Abner was murdered. And that's pretty much this section, so let's go ahead and we're going to get into it. Uh, 2 Samuel chapter 3. Then there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David, but David grew stronger and stronger, and the house of Saul grew weaker and weaker. Some were born to, so, excuse me, sons were born to David in Hebron. His firstborn was Amon by Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess. His second, Chilia by Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite. The third, Absalom, the son of Mahakah, the daughter of Talmai, king of Gershur. The fourth, Adonijah, the son of Haggith. The fifth, Sephthathai, the son of Abital. And the sixth, Ithrium, by David's wife, Elga. These were born to David in Hebron. Now it was so, while there was war between the house of Saul and the house of David, that Abner was strengthening his hold on the house of Saul. And Saul had a concubine whose name was Rizpah, the daughter of Aya. So Ishbosheth said to Abner, Why have you gone into my father's concubine? And Abner became very angry at the words of Ishbosheth and said, Am I a dog's head that belongs to Judah? Today I showed loyalty to the house of Saul, your father, to his brothers and to his friends, and have not delivered you into the hand of David, and you charge me today with a fault concerning this woman? May God do so to Abner and more also, if I do not do for David as the Lord has sworn to him, to transfer the kingdom from the house of Saul and set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah, from Dan to Beersheba. And he could not answer Abner another word, because he feared him. Then Abner sent messengers on his behalf to David, saying, Whose is the land? Saying also, Make your covenant with me, and indeed my hand shall be with you to bring all Israel to you. And David said, Good, I will make a covenant with you, but one thing I require of you. You shall not see my face unless you first bring Michal, Saul's daughter, when you come to see my face. So David sent messengers to Ishbosheth, Saul's son, saying, Give me my wife Michal, for whom I betrothed to myself for a hundred foreskins of the Philistines. And Ishbosheth sent and took her from her husband, from Paltiel, the son of Laish. Then her husband went along with her to Bahurim, weeping behind her. So Abner said to him, Go, return. And he returned. Now Abner had communicated with the elders of Israel, saying, In time past you were seeking for David to be king over you. Now then do it. For the Lord has spoken of David, saying, By the hand of my servant David I will save my people Israel from the hand of the Philistines and the hand of all their enemies. And Abner also spoke in the hearing of Benjamin. Then Abner also went to speak in the hearing of David in Hebron, all that seemed good to Israel and the whole house of Benjamin. So Abner and twenty men with him came to David at Hebron, and David made a feast for Abner and the men who were with him. Then Abner said to David, I will arise and go and gather all Israel to my lord, the king, that he may make a covenant with you, and that you may be reign over all that your heart desires. So David sent Abner away, and he went in peace. At that moment the servants of David and Joab came from a raid and brought much spoil with them, but Abner was not with David in Hebron, for he had sent him away, and he had gone in peace. 
When Joab and all the troops that were with him had come, they told Joab, saying, Abner the son of Ner came to the king, and he sent him away, and he is gone in peace. Then Joab said to the king and said, What have you done? Look, Abner came to you. Why is it that you sent him away, and he is already gone? Surely you realize that Abner the son of Ner came to deceive you, to know you're going out, you're coming in, and to know all that you are doing. And when Joab had gone from David's presence, he sent messengers after Abner, who brought him back from the well of Sarah. But David did not know it. Now when Abner had returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside to the gate to speak with him privately, and there stabbed him in the stomach, so that he died for the blood of Eshiel his brother. Afterward, when David heard it, he said, My kingdom and I are guiltless before the Lord forever of the blood of Abner the son of Ner. Let it rest on the head of Joab and all his father's house, and let there never fail to be in the house of Joab one who has a discharge, or who is a leper, who leans on a staff, or falls by the sword, or who lacks bread. So Joab and Abishel, his brother, killed Abner because he had killed their brother, Ashiel, at Gibeon in the battle. Then David said to Joab and all the people who were with him, Tear your clothes, gird yourselves with sackcloth, and mourn for Abner. And King David followed the coffin, so they buried Abner in Hebron, and the king lifted up his voice and wept at the grave of Abner, and all the people wept. And the king sang a lament over Abner and said, Should Abner die as a fool dies? Your hands were not bound, nor your feet put into fetters. As a man falls before wicked men, so you fell. Then all the people wept over him again. And when all the people came to persuade David to eat food while it was still day, David took an oath, saying, God, do so to me and more also if I taste bread or anything else till the sun goes down. Now all the people took note of it and pleased them, since whatever the king did pleased all the people. For all the people and all Israel understood that day that it had not been the king's intent to kill Abner the son of Ner. Then the king said to his servants, Do you not know that a prince and a great man has fallen this day in Israel? And I am weak today, though anointed king, and these men, the sons of Zuria, are too harsh for me. The Lord shall repay the evildoer according to his wickedness. May God bless reading of his word. May God bless you. Bye.